Hey everybody, it's Lon Seib and it's time once again for your weekly wrap up and this week we're going to talk about saving money on inkjet printers. One of the biggest gripes I've heard from viewers over the years is the cost of ownership of these inkjet printers. They're cheap to buy, but the ink replacement often costs more than the printer itself. And thankfully, manufacturers are starting to get the hint that we want more options. And now we've got a few different options with tank printers and subscription services. And I thought I would go through what some of these options are from the big four manufacturers. Let's get to it. So today's video is going to focus on what the big four are doing in the consumer space. They are Brother, HP, Epson, and Canon. They are all offering lower cost of ownership options to consumers, and they still offer the expensive options as well if you wish to go down that road. They don't want to lose any revenue opportunities here, but they are trying to make an effort here. So we're going to take a look at what each of these manufacturers is offering. Now, before we dive too much further into this topic, you should decide whether or not you even need an inkjet printer, because I think for many people, a laser printer is the better way to go, especially if you're like me and don't print all that often, because the longer one of those inkjet printers sits, the more it gets clogged up and the more ink you're wasting trying to unclog it. I've got one in the back room over there that I print to maybe once every six months, and I spend a good 35 or 40 minutes just trying to clean out the ink clogs that get into that printer and it gets very frustrating, whereas my laser printer is always ready to go no matter how long that printer sits. But the inkjet printers do have some advantages. The first is that they do much better at printing photos, even the cheaper printers. But if you really want really good photo output, you want to go with one of those five or six color inkjet printers. Canon has a bunch of really nice ones, but it costs a lot to print those photos out because they just devour ink and there's no tank option for those, unfortunately. But the inbound cost, the cost of buying the printer, is often less than the laser printer. They take up less room on the desk. They're much more compact. Uh, but they're not great, though, as I mentioned, for low volume printing because they do tend to get clogged up when they sit for too long. That ink dries out. On the laser printer side, they're much faster at printing in most cases, especially at the entry level. They have sharper text and better business graphics. So if you're printing out charts and other things, they tend to look better on laser printers because they are sharper than the inkjets are. Uh, they can be more expensive to purchase, but they often are less expensive to operate. And I'll give you a great example. I have a Lexmark black and white printer that I got for review from the Amazon Vine program free of charge, by the way, about six years ago. And that printer is still running on its original toner cartridge. It is first running out now, just to give you a sense as to, on some of these printers, how long they can go in between toner swaps. I'll probably spend 200 bucks on that cartridge, but I got five or six years out of it, printing every couple of days with it. And the nice thing, again, about laser printers is that there's no clogs cleaning or anything else. They have much less maintenance than you would find on the inkjet side. And of course, you're not wasting toner trying to get that printer clean either. So the bottom line here is that if you're not printing all that frequently and color is not that important to you, get an entry level black and white laser printer. You're gonna be very happy with that decision. It'll last forever. It can sit for six months and pick up right where it left off when you go to print again. And my experience over the years has been very good with the lasers. But if you're doing a lot of color printing or you're doing a higher volume of printing, there are areas where the color inkjet printers might make more sense, especially now with some of these new options that are out there to reduce your cost of ownership. And we're going to take a look at the tank method and the subscription method so you can figure out which of these might work best for you. Now on the tank side, we've got three options. Epson has their super tank and they also have printers called eco tank. They're pretty much the same thing. You have the Brother Ink Investment System, and then you've got the Canon Mega Tank. And what these all have in common is that they have a higher cost of entry, but a lower cost of ownership. So on the Epson and the Canon side, depending on the amount of ink you're using on the page, you might end up spending about a penny or two per print versus maybe 20 or 30 cents per print with the cartridge model. That's a significant savings, but you're going to pay more for the printer at the outset because the company has to make money somehow. 
and the way they've typically been operating is that they sell you a printer, sometimes below cost, knowing that you're going to be spending much more on ink as time goes on. In fact, in many cases, it's often cheaper to buy a new printer than it is to buy a set of ink for the printer that you bought a few months ago, and they're banking on that, which is why you pay more. Now, I also found with these tank printers is that you tend to get lower quality mechanisms and print quality. So if you go out and spend a couple hundred bucks on one of these tank printers, many times the quality of the print that you're going to get out of that printer and the speed of it will mirror perhaps a $60 or $70 subsidized printer. So the quality here on the entry level of these tank printers is not great. As you work your way up the product line, you can get better quality, but you'll be paying much more. And that, again, is the trade-off. They are subsidizing on the other business model, whereas here, you're paying for everything up front so the company can get their profit margin. As a result of these lower quality print mechanisms, these printers, especially at the entry level, are not great for photos. Epson did have a five color tank printer, but I don't seem to see it available anymore. So it looks as though if you are looking to do high quality photo prints, the cartridge model is still probably the model you'll have to follow and you'll be paying much more. But if you're doing documents, the tank printers will do better for text and business graphics, but again, not as good as LaserMite. Now, most of the tank printer manufacturers will tell you that you're gonna get about a year's worth of ink included in the box. But there's one important caveat here, which is that your mileage is going to vary based on what you are printing. So for example, all of these uh, images that you see on these printers right now, that image on the Epson printer on the left and the Canon one on the right, are going beyond what they would consider to be average coverage. When they tell you you're gonna get 7,000 pages out of your supply of ink, this is the kind of document they're basing those numbers on, not what they're putting in the pictures here on these printers, because you might be looking at 45, 50, 60% ink coverage in some cases, sometimes even more than that if you're printing photos. And in those instances, you might be printing five or six pages worth of ink on a single page. And that is important to note, not only for the tank printers, but also the traditional cartridge ones, because in many cases, if you are printing out very graphically intense documents, you might only get 50 pages out of that $40 ink cartridge. And that's where these tank printers will do better. And two of them are actually very economical when it comes to buying more supplies. Let's take a look at the Epson Super Tank and Eco Tank line. Uh, the base model will start typically around $200 or so. Other models of it will escalate in price as time goes on. The EcoTank and SuperTank printers usually come with enough ink for 4,500 black and white pages and 7,500 color documents. But remember, they're assuming this kind of coverage, so your mileage will be very different depending on what you're printing. But the full ink replacement on one of these printers is very reasonable. As you can see here, it's about $60, which is not bad at all. So the cost of getting one of these Epson Super Tank Eco Tanks refilled is very, very minimal, but you're going to be paying much more upfront for that privilege. But I think it might be worth it for people that are printing super high volumes of output. All right, next up is the Brother Ink Vestment System. I believe I called it Ink Investment earlier incorrectly. Now these do have the lowest cost of entry. The base model costs significantly less than the other two options cost. And as you work your way up the product line, you'll find that the brothers might cost a little less than their equivalents with Epson or Canon. But as with everything, there's a catch. And the catch here is that when you exhaust your supply of ink, it will cost four times as much to replace the ink with the Brother Ink Vestment System versus the Canon or the Epson bottle options. These are still using cartridges, but super high capacity cartridges. Uh, so there is a version of the Ink Vestment line that has printers with two years of ink, basically two sets of ink in the box. And I think that's the better way to go because you're not paying the full amount to go to the two year supply version. And it is a better purchase, I think, if you do like the Brother printers. But just bear in mind, when that second supply runs out, you will be paying much, much more to replenish the ink, even though it does have a little more capacity with 6,000 black and white pages and 5,000 color pages per set. But still, the overall cost is still much higher than what you'll see on the Epson or the Canon. And that brings us to the Canon Megatank. 
which in many ways mirrors the Epson offering. The base model costs the same. They have very similar models as you work your way up the product line with similar escalations in price. Uh, the Canon does a little better on print capacity per ink supply, about 6,000 black and white pages and 7,000 in color. But the ink replacement cost here for the bottles is the same as what it would cost on the Epson. So in this instance, it's more of a brand preference, I think, between Epson or Canon uh, versus any kind of economic decision. But you might want to dive into the models and see which one looks better. We'll try to get some of these printers in as time goes on here and look at them. I haven't looked at a Canon printer in a while uh, to see which of the two is better. But I found typically at the low end, they all pretty much perform about the same. So if you're doing a high volume of printing and going through a lot of cartridges right now, an investment in a tank printer is probably something you should consider doing. Uh, you will pay more for that printer up front, but the ongoing cost of ownership will be lower. And I do think you could recognize a significant return on investment with one of these, depending on which one you buy and your volume. Again, I think the Epson and the Canon are the most economical, given that it dramatically reduces your cost per print. Uh, the Brother is competitive, but again, the replacement costs on the ink after you exhaust your initial supply will be much more. So I think if you're really out for saving money, Epson and Canon might be the way to go here. Now, if you feel like a tank printer might be a little too much based on your usage, then HP has a different option. So they don't sell tank printers, but they do have a subscription program called HP Instant Ink. And the advantage here is that you can buy a printer at the same price you would buy a traditional cartridge printer at but you get the ink cartridges delivered to you from HP automatically, and you pay for a monthly subscription based on the amount of usage you think you will do. And they've got a couple of different pricing tiers to meet different levels of usage. Now, this is optional. So if you buy a printer that supports instant ink, you can choose to subscribe or you can decide to continue buying cartridges on a regular basis. The choice is yours as to how you want to do it. Now you can cancel the subscription anytime you want, but if you have an instant ink cartridge and you cancel your subscription, the cartridge will not work because the printer is always phoning home to validate that you have an active subscription before it will let you print. So keep that in mind, you can't game the system too well here. I think this works really well for low volume printing. Again, I think if you are doing super low volumes, the lasers are the way to go. But what's nice about Instant Ink is that you're not dinged for head cleaning. So when you go and try to clog out those uh, ink cartridges, you're not paying for that ink. You're only paying when you print a page out. And I think that's a very important distinction here uh, because you're not penalized for all of the maintenance that the printer might do, which you are penalized for when you're buying cartridges or ink bottles. Uh, as a result, there's a lower entry and ownership cost here because you are providing HP an ongoing source of revenue. Uh, but again, I think that revenue will be less for the company with the subscription uh, versus buying the cartridges outright. And as I mentioned, this is a per page model, regardless of the coverage and inks used. So if you are printing a lot of pages like this, it will count as the same amount of printing as something that covered the whole page. So if you were printing out photos, you know, 50, 60 times a day, that page cost per page will be the same for those photos as it would be for this low coverage document. And that's a big distinction here because they don't look at how much ink you're using, just how many pages are running through the machine. And that's how you base your subscription on. So let's take a look at the pricing here. Uh, many HP printers now have a free plan, uh, which they say they can cancel with 60 days notice anytime. So we'll see how long it lasts for. But you will be able to get 15 pages a month for free. HP, when you buy the printer, will ship you ink to give you the ability to print that low volume. If you go beyond, though, the 15 pages you're allocated, then you'll pay a dollar for every 10 pages after that. So it quickly works better for, uh, for HP if you go beyond the 15 pages. The entry level plan is $3 a month for 50 pages. Uh, you can do 100 pages for $4.99, or you can do uh, 300 pages for $9.99. But look at what it would cost for an ink replacement on that same printer. You get about 240 pages with average coverage for 50 bucks. So you can see how much money you'll be saving here if you are in the subscription plan versus buying the cartridges outright. 
And they do allow some rollover as well. So for example, on the entry level plan, you can roll over up to 100 unused pages from one month to the next. So that's good to see there's some flexibility in these plans. If you go over, uh, then each additional set of pages will cost you a dollar uh, based on whatever thresholds they've set for each of those subscription plans. And they now have a high volume plan. So if you're doing 700 pages a month, uh, you can pay 20 bucks and they'll also send you an extra set of cartridges as well. And what happens here is as the cartridges get lower, the printer tells HP to send you another one. So if you are doing larger page coverage, you'll probably get cartridges more frequently than you would if you're just printing out black and white documents like this. So it's good to see now that we have some options for saving money when shopping for a new printer. One thing we're not going to cover in this video are some of the third-party supplies that are out there. So you can buy off-brand ink cartridges and ink refilling kits and everything else. I've had bad luck with those things in the past, but I would love to maybe explore that topic in the future. The focus today was looking at what options you have when shopping for a printer, and hopefully you found all of this interesting. Uh, if there are third-party options out there that you've had success with, let me know down in the comments below and maybe we'll take a look at this topic in the future. Now, as an aside, and I've mentioned this in the past, whenever I review a printer here on the channel, the video doesn't do well initially, but always does exceptionally well over the long term, especially when I cover something from one of these big four brands. And what's really odd is that the videos continue to perform long after the printer I reviewed is discontinued. And I found that like when the printer gets to about the three or four year mark, people start coming to those videos because they're having trouble with the printer and are trying to figure out what's going on. And they see a long review and figure something in there might be able to help them uh, with their problems. But it's really intriguing to see how well the printer reviews do here on the channel, thanks to search results and algorithmic recommendations. Now, this week's wrap-up is being brought to you by all of you. I want to thank El Chigo, who became a new YouTube member this week. But I also want to thank everyone who's been contributing on an ongoing basis and everyone who watches on an ongoing basis, too, because all of those things equal channel growth. And if you want to support the channel, you can. You can go to lon.tv support and make a monthly or a one-time contribution to the channel. You can do that through my donor box page through Patreon or through the YouTube membership program. And you can click that join icon right down below this video to do that. And you get a cool badge next to your name when you do click that button. Uh, this week we did two live streams. We were playing around with some low cost HDMI adapters. They sell for about 20 bucks or so on Amazon. And I was very pleased with their performance. We were uh, doing a live stream while I shot the video. Those are always fun to do with you all because I get a lot of great ideas for other things to include in that review. Uh, we also tested out a window-mounted security camera from Panasonic, and we'll have the review up of that a little later this week. Uh, we didn't do anything on the Extras channel this week, but more unboxings will be on the way. And then on the main channel, of course, we had that video of those USB devices. We cut that hour plus down to about 16 minutes or so. Incidentally, that live stream got cut off again because of my lousy Comcast connection. The fiber optic guy, though, did come out last week, and it looks like the plan is moving along here. So hopefully within the next month or two, we'll have a much better, more reliable live streaming uh, connection here. But until then, it's going to be a little flaky, and I have a few more strategies to try to minimize the flakiness. Uh, we also had my monthly sponsored video from Plex, and this month we talked about Plex running now on Apple CarPlay with the Plex Amp music player. Plex had worked with Android Auto in the past, but not CarPlay. So this was a big update, I think, for people that uh, have CarPlay and a Plex Pass. So check that out if you're interested. And then we also took a look at a nice premium laptop from Dell, the XPS 15 9500. Beautiful display on this one. A premium laptop, of course, but it's fun to look at the premium stuff every once in a while. And what's neat is that when you look at the premium laptops, you can look at all the other laptops we've looked at that perform about the same, but just don't look as pretty. And it's good to see that you can get premium performance in a budget package if you want, but the premium stuff certainly is a nice luxury to have. This week on the channel, we've got a couple of things planned. We're gonna uh, take a look at hopefully the shadow game streaming service. I've been meaning to get to this and stuff just keeps coming in that knocks them off the schedule. And this is a really neat platform because uh, unlike some of the other game streaming platforms that are 
you know, running Windows games but don't give you access to the computer that's running them. Shadow basically rents you a Windows 10 server in the cloud and you can do whatever you want with it. And if you want to install Game Pass games on it and Steam games and Epic games, whatever you want to install and run, you can run in their data center. And I've been finding it's even more useful than just gaming and we'll cover some of the things I've been doing with Shadow in that review once we get some time to record it. Uh, we're also going to have the video review of that Panasonic camera we were playing with in the live stream. I, hopefully I'll get this keyboard review posted. Um, I've been so productive, it's just been getting knocked off the schedule, but that'll be up at some point. And I might have some other things coming in this week as well, including another AMD-based ThinkPad to look at. So we've got so much stuff to review. This is the fall when everything comes in, so I am really busy when I'm, I'm always happy to be busy, so it's good. Uh, if you want to be notified whenever we go live or update anything here on the channel, you can click that bell. We also have other channels that you can find me on, including my Amazon shop where I go live quite a bit, and sometimes the quality on the Amazon stream is better than it is on YouTube. Uh, so be sure to check me out there and follow me. There'll be more stuff happening there soon. Uh, you can engage with the channel by going to lon.tv slash email. You can go to our Facebook group, which is growing by leaps and bounds, a great way to connect with me and everyone else. And then we've got my store at lon.tv slash store, where right now we've got both of those Acer laptops with the AMD Ryzen's we looked at last week for sale at a price lower than what you'll pay at retail because they are the actual used items we reviewed here on the channel. There is one of everything, so when you uh, miss out, you miss out. And if you want to be notified every time we add something to the store, you can sign up for my store alert email at lon.tv slash store alert. And this is different than the other email list I just pointed you to. So if you are on the main list, you're not getting these emails. So if you want that store alert, sign up there and you'll get it. And that's going to do it for now. I want to thank you all for your continued viewership and support. Uh, hopefully everyone is safe and healthy. And I know a lot of folks are going back to school this week. My kids are uh, going in on the hybrid model for a couple days a week. So stay healthy out there. Uh, please keep those questions and comments coming. And if there are topics that you think might be helpful to parents that are helping to support their children's remote learning, I am happy to cover some of those topics. Let me know down in the comments below because I am struggling along with the rest of you. That's going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Tom Albrecht, Chris Allegretta, David Hockman, Brian Parker, Mike Patterson, and Bill Pomerantz. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.